learning objectives after completing this modules learners will be able to understand the meaning of international business identify the operating differences in international and domestic business know the scope of international business find out the benefits of international business learn the modes of doing international business study the promotional schemes of the government meaning of international business and reasons for international business introduction developments in communication technology infrastructures etc have brought the world countries closer by cutting down the geographical distances the changes helped the countries to trade goods and services much easily this is further aided by world trade organization wto and the reforms undertaken by the countries to ease restrictive trade policies in a way the world has become one global village businesses are now foreign into international markets citing immense opportunities india too is increasing its foreign trade and indian companies are investing in international businesses meaning of international business the production of goods and services and their trade within the boundaries of a nation is known as domestic business or national business it is also known as home trade or internal trade if the same activities are undertaken outside the boundaries of a nation then it is known as international business it is not just restricted to import and export of goods it also involves setting up companies outside a country and manufacturing goods or providing services to foreign customers thus international business comprises of both trade and production of goods and services in foreign countries reasons for international business countries engage in international business due to difference in factors of production among them factors of productions like capital labor technology availability of natural resources etc varies among them some countries specialize in producing particular goods and services at cheaper rates and export to countries in need and gain profit companies to work in the same way they engage in international business to import goods at cheaper prices and export goods to fetch good returns international business versus domestic business doing business in an international market is complex than in domestic market politics socio economic dynamics cultural aspects etc of the foreign country determine the business there so adapting the strategizing as per the host environment is the key some differences in doing domestic and international business are as below nationality of buyers and sellers it is easy to do business deals if the buyers and sellers are of same nationality in international markets the differences in languages customs attitudes business practices and goals make it difficult to do business nationality of other stakeholders the nationality of a company's stakeholders such as employees suppliers customers etc differs in an international business environment it complexes the decision making process firms have to take care of the values and aspirations of these stakeholders mobility of factors of production factors of production like labor and capital have restricted mobility in international business this may be due to legal restrictions environment socio cultural settings and economic and cultural conditions of the foreign country customer heterogeneity across markets customers in international markets are diverse due to their socio cultural backgrounds for companies this complicates their product designing task and customer strategies in domestic markets such diversity is less and can be worked upon easily differences in business systems and practices these vary from country to country 
due to their socio-economic conditions and historical coincidences of the countries. Thus, firms have to adapt their business process to the conditions of the international markets. Political system and risks. It is easy for business persons to understand their domestic political system and risks. Scope of international business. The scope of international business is much larger. It has many components in it. The following are some of the major components. Merchandise exports and imports. This is the exporting and importing of physical goods that are visible and can be touched. It is also known as trade in goods and it excludes trade in services. Service exports and imports. This involves services such as transportation, tourism, entertainment, boating and lodging, communication, banking, insurance, etc being traded in international markets. Licensing and Franchising International business can be done by licensing and franchising of trademarks, patents or copyrights for money. Best examples are companies like Pepsi, Coca-Cola and McDonald's. Foreign Investments When a company or an individual invests funds in foreign country, for financial returns, then it is known as foreign investment. It is done in two types, direct or portfolio. Direct foreign investment. It is investing directly in plants and machinery in a foreign country to produce goods and market them. Through direct investment or FDI, the investor can have a controlling hand in the foreign company. The investment can be done through a joint venture or PPP or by setting up a wholly owned subsidiary. Portfolio Investment This is investing in a company by buying the shares of the company. It can also be through giving loans. The investing party earns dividends or interest on loans. Under this, there is no involvement in the operations of the business. It is a mode simply to earn income by investing in a foreign company. Benefits of International Business There are several benefits for nations and business firms in undertaking international business. These benefits led to the expansion of international trade and investments leading to globalization. The benefits of international trade are Benefits to countries Earning of foreign exchange A country can earn foreign exchange through international business. It can use this to procure goods and services that it cannot produce domestically. More efficient use of resources The principle of international trade is to produce more of what a country is capable of and export the surplus. With this, all nations benefit from the equitable distribution of resources improving growth prospects and employment potentials. Developing countries cannot absorb the extra production nor can they produce goods only for domestic consumption. Instead, they can export and improve their growth prospects and generate employment. Such a strategy was followed successfully by countries like Singapore, South Korea and China. Increased standard of living Through international trade, People start to use better goods and services produced in other countries, thus improving the standard of living. Benefits to firms Prospects for high profits Companies can earn more profits by selling their goods or services in international markets. Increased capacity utilization Excess production capacities of firms can be utilized by gaining international orders. It helps firms to achieve economies of scale, lower production costs and earn more profits. Prospects for growth Demand for a product may get saturated in a domestic market. In such a scenario, firms can raise their growth prospects by selling in foreign markets. Way out to intense competition in domestic market. For a company, intense domestic competition blunts its profitability. It can raise its growth and profitability by engaging in international trade. 
Improved Business Vision International business becomes a vision if the company wants growth, competitiveness, diversification and gaining strategic advantages. Modes of Entry into International Business Part 1 There are many ways to enter into international business. They are as below. Exporting and Importing It is selling and buying of goods from abroad. It is done in two ways. Direct way. A company is directly involved in export and import activities. Indirect way. A middleman or entity is involved. Advantages. Easiest way to enter international business. Needs less involvement of time and money. Risk on investment is less. Limitations. It involves additional costs on packaging, transportation, insurance, custom duty, etc. Import restrictions of countries hamper export potential. Knowing customers of foreign market is difficult. Many firms begin their international business through exports or imports. Contract manufacturing. Here, firms enter into a contract with foreign companies to manufacture goods. It is also known as outsourcing. There are three major forms. Producing components, assembling components, complete manufacturing. Foreign companies provide technological and management guidance. Final products are sold under the brand name of the foreign firm. Advantages Large-scale production without investment as facilities are already existing in foreign countries. Limited investment risk Lower production costs if the facility is based in low-cost country. Increased production capacities of local firms in foreign countries. Chance for local firm to involve in international business. Limitation Lapses in adhering to design and quality standards by local firms cause problem to international firm. The firm in foreign country loses control over manufacturing process. Local firm cannot sell the contracted output. It is to be sold to international company at predetermined prices. Local firms may incur loss if the prices are higher in the open market than the predetermined prices. Modes of Entry into International Business Part 2 Licensing and Franchising Licensing through a contractual arrangement Access is granted to trademarks, copyrights, names, patents and technology to a foreign firm for a royalty. This is related to goods. Franchising. This is related to the service business. The franchises set strict rules for the franchisee operators. Here access is granted to the technology, trademark etc. for a certain period of time and for a payment. Advantages. The investment is done wholly by the firm or person of a foreign country. Hence, investment risk is zero. No loss is incurred upon licensor or franchisor. Lower risk of government takeovers as the licensee or franchisee is local person and they have great market knowledge. Limitations Risk of re-engineering of licensed or franchised products. Leakage of trade secrets. Conflicts may arise between licensor and licensee on non-payment of royalty, quality maintenance, etc. Joint Ventures It involves partnering with a foreign firm or person to start an international business. It can be done in three ways. 1. Buying a part of the local company by a foreign investor. 2. Local firm buying a part in a foreign company. 3. Local and foreign firms jointly forming an enterprise. Advantages Sharing of equity means less financial burden on the foreign firm. Large projects can be executed through joint ventures. The local partner helps the foreign firm in understanding local market dynamics. Avoids sharing of costs and risks involved in entering a foreign country. Limitation A risk to trade secrets Dual ownership may lead to conflicts and issue 
over control of the business. Wholly owned subsidiary. This mode allows for a complete control of the foreign subsidiary company by the parent company. This is done in two ways. Setting up a new plant called Greenfield Venture and acquiring an existing foreign company. Advantages. Complete control of operations and no risk to trade secrets. Limitations. High investment requirement. A complete burden on losses and regulations on 100% venture in some foreign countries. Export Import Procedures and Documentation Part 1 The international business of exporting and importing of goods involves many procedures. Export Procedure Receipt of Enquiry and Sending Quotations Foreign buyers ask exporters for quotations which contain price of the goods, terms and conditions in exporting, etc. Exporters send a proforma invoice with required information as a reply. Recept of order or intent. The placing of an order by the prospective buyer is called indent. It consists of information on price, delivery terms, quality of goods, etc. Assessing the importer's creditworthiness and securing a guarantee for the payments. Exporters assess the creditworthiness of importers. Demand a letter of credit to avoid non-payment risks. Importers bank issue this and agrees to pay certain amount. Obtaining export license. Anyone exporting goods from India needs an exporting license. It involves opening a bank account getting import-export code, IEC number, from Directorate General Foreign Trade, DGFT, or Regional Import-Export Licensing Authority, getting a registration from Export Promotion Council, and registering with Export Credit and Guarantee Corporation, ECGC, obtaining pre-shipment finance. This is taken by the exporter from their bank start export production. Production or Procurement of Goods Exporter starts to produce goods. Pre-shipment inspection. This is a mandatory inspection by the government to check quality of goods. An inspection certificate will be given to the exporter. Excise clearance. The exporter needs to apply to regional excise commissioner with an invoice regarding export duty. The commissioner gives excise clearance. Under duty drawback scheme of the government, Exporters can be exempted from excise duty. Obtaining Certificate of Origin To avail tariff concessions, importer must ask exporter to Certificate of Origin to ascertain the originating country of goods. Reservation of Shipping Space The exporting company books space from a shipping company for exporting goods. It enters the details of goods, date of delivery and Port of Delivery The shipping company issues a shipping order after accepting, packing and forwarding. The goods are duly packed and transported to Port of Shipment. Insurance of Goods Goods are insured to avoid risks of loss or damage. Customs Clearance Before shipping, the exporter must ensure that the goods have proper custom clearance. A shipping bill is prepared and is submitted to the customs clearing house. Then, a carting order is obtained from superintendent of port for allowing the cargo to dock. All this is handled by a clearing and forwarding agent, C and F. Obtaining mate's receipt. Captain of the ship issues mate's receipt to the superintendent after cargo is loaded onto the ship. The receipt is then submitted to C and F. Payment of freight and issuance of bill of lading. Shipping company calculates the freight based on mate's receipt and issues bill of lading as an evidence of goods having been accepted. Preparation of invoice. An invoice is generated stating the quantity of goods and amount to be paid by the importer. Securing payment. The payment is done at the end 
through the help of the bankers of exporters and importers. Export Import Procedures and Documentation Part 2 Import Procedure Trade Inquiry Importer inquires for the exporters of the required goods through trade directories or trade associations etc. A trade inquiry is thus generated. The exporter sends a pro forma invoice after receiving trade inquiry. Procurement of license. As per export import policy, an importer is to be taken from the Directorate General of Foreign Trade DGFT and an import export code IEC number is to be taken. Obtaining foreign exchange. Foreign exchange is to be obtained to pay the exporter. It is done by obtaining the sanction of foreign exchange from RBI authorized bank. Place order or indent. The importer places an indent or import order containing information on price, size, quality, grade, etc. of goods to the exporter. It also contains the delivery date, port of destination, etc. Obtaining letter of credit. It is obtained by the importer from a bank to forward the exporter. Arranging for finance. Importer thus arranges for finances to be paid to the exporter on the arrival of goods. Recept of shipment advice. When goods are loaded for transport, the exporter sends a shipment advice to the importer. The information regarding the goods like invoice numbers, the name of the vessel, port of export is mentioned in it. The retirement of import documents. The shipping of goods the exporter sends necessary documents to the importer via their bank. The documents include bill of exchange, commercial invoice, certificate of origin, etc. When the bill of exchange is accepted by the importer, it is known as retirement of import documents. Arrival of goods. At the importing port, the head of the shipping vessel provides import general manifest containing details of imported goods to the officer in charge of the dock. Customs clearance and release of goods. For the release of goods, they must pass through customs clearance. First, the importer must obtain the delivery order for taking the goods. Then, dock dues have to be paid and port trust dues receipt must be obtained. Later, a bill of entry is to be filled for custom duty assessment. Finally, after paying the import duty, the bill of entry is shown to the superintendent of the dock and goods are released. Foreign Trade Promotion Incentives and Organizational Support Foreign Trade Promotion Measures and Schemes Companies can avail benefits through various trade promotion schemes of the government. They are as follows. Duty Drawback Scheme Any excise duty or customs duty paid on exporting goods is refunded under the scheme. Export Manufacturing Under Bond Scheme Excise and other duties are exempted for firms that provide an undertaking that the goods produced by them are solely for export purposes. Exemption from payment of sales tax. Goods for export are exempted from sales tax. It is available for firms that are 100% export oriented and those in special economic zones SEZs. Advanced license scheme. The scheme allows the firm manufacturing goods for exports can get inputs for production either domestically or from international sources duty-free. Export Promotion Capital Goods Scheme EPCG Capital goods can be imported at lower custom rates or zero rates for producing goods for export. Scheme of recognizing export firms as export house, trading house and superstar trading house. Export firms that achieved an average export of performance in past years are granted status of export house, trading house, star trading house by government. They also have to fulfill some conditions like building marketing infrastructure etc. Export of services. 
service houses are recognized to increase export of services under the scheme. Export Finance The scheme offers finance for various needs of exporters. Export Processing Zones EPZs. These are exclusive areas to produce goods for export. They are often located near seaports and airports. The areas are duty-free. Organizational Support Department of Commerce It is the apex body in the country to promote external trade. It formulates trade policies. Export Promotion Councils These are to promote exports of particular products. Commodity Boards These are to promote export of traditional commodities of the country. Export Inspection Council EIC It takes care of the quality control of exports from India and also undertakes pre-shipment inspections. Indian Trade Promotion Organization ITPO It organizes trade fairs both within and outside the country. It helps the industry in promoting trade. Indian Institute of Foreign Trade Its objective is to professionalize the foreign trade management of the country. Indian Institute of Packaging IIP It helps the industry with research-oriented packaging material. International Trade Institutions and Trade Agreements After the World Wars, for reconstruction and development, the world nations established various institutions for promoting international trade and financing for reconstruction. World Bank It began as an International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, IBRD. It is to aid the war-affected countries in their reconstruction process. From 1950s, the World Bank started helping underdeveloped nations. In 1960, it has set up International Development Association, IDA, for providing loans at concessional rates. International Monetary Fund, IMF. It was set up for building a system for adjusting exchange rates. Its main objectives are 1. Promoting international monetary cooperation. 2. Balanced expansion of business trade. 3. Stability in exchange rate. 4. To help establish multilateral payment systems. World Trade Organization, WTO and Major Agreements WTO is a successor to the General Agreement for Tariffs and Trades, GATT, GATT. It is to facilitate trade among world nations with minimum tariffs. India is a founding member. Objectives Reduce tariff and eliminate trade barriers. Improving standards of living, generating employment, increasing incomes and demand. Sustainable development. To set up a viable and long-lasting trading system. Functions. Mitigating trade-related grievances. Code of conduct in international trade. Dispute settlement. Making members adhere to rules and regulations. Periodically assessing the agreements and declarations. Benefits. Promotes international trade. Settles disputes. Improves living standards through free trade. Fastened economic growth. Helps developing countries grow. Summary. Let us summarize what we have learnt. International business is the production of goods and services and their trade within the boundaries of a nation is known as domestic business or national business. Doing business in an international market is complex than in domestic market. Politics, socio-economic dynamics, cultural aspects etc. of the foreign country determine the business there. So, Adapting and strategizing as per the host environment is the key. The many components of international business include Merchandise exports and imports Service exports and imports Licensing and franchising Foreign investments Benefits of international business To countries 1. Earning of foreign exchange 2. 
more efficient use of resources. 3. Improving growth prospects and employment potentials. 4. Increased standard of living. 2. Firms. 1. Prospects for high profits. 2. Increased capacity utilization. 3. Prospects for growth. 4. Way out to intense competition in domestic market. 5. Improved business vision. Various modes of entering international business include exporting and importing, contract manufacturing, licensing and franchising, joint ventures, wholly owned subsidiary. International business of export and import is complex with various formalities to be fulfilled. The government through various schemes and organizations promotes international trade. Apart from national support, there are international organizations to support and promote international trade.